My grandparents had 14 children. 10 of those 14 ended up contracting uh, early onset Alzheimer's. I think last count we had 16 aunts and uncles and cousins that have died. And a lot, of, a lot more are still uh, battling the disease. Our average age of onset is uh, 50 years old. So they, they've been dying anywhere from 46, age 46 to age 60. The odds are about 98% that if you have that gene, you're going to get the disease, period. And uh, I guess that made me pretty special. <laughs> It's devastating. You know, we, you essentially have generation after generation that develops these mutations, and people typically start to develop symptoms at the prime of their life. So this is a, a global multi-center study that um, was started here at Washington University in 2008. And what it does is it focuses on these families that have these rare mutations that lead to early onset Alzheimer's disease. It was within a year of dad finding out that I believe we had come in for our genetic counseling and got tested. My sister won the roll of the dice and I lost. So I have the gene and she does not. The number of times people would say to me, I don't understand why you're in a research group for Alzheimer's, you're so young or you're too young. And then would come out about other families that we know of that are in their 30s and 40s dealing with Alzheimer's. Personally, I can't allow myself the, the benefit of saying, I'm gonna be like my dad and not do anything about it. Throughout the ages, actually, it's, it's unique individuals oftentimes that really provide us with breakthroughs. We can see, is this just something that is so specific to Doug's genetic background and the exposures and the life that he's had that is, you know, it's, it's unique to him and, and he's just extremely lucky? Or is it something more mechanistically that we can put a finger on and say, we really think that it's this pathway that's allowed you to resist, to be resilient, to having the traces of the disease for so long. On the left, we have Doug's scan. On the right, we have a scan from an individual that is cognitively impaired and has been um, demented for numbers of years. And in here, what you see is these areas that are darker on the scan have atrophied and, and they've filled with cerebral spinal fluid. On Doug's scan, so even though he's well past the age that we would have expect him to become demented and show similar patterns of atrophy, what you see on his hippocampus is that it's, it's still relatively tight on both sides, left and the right. He is in kind of the one in a million chance. We don't know exactly why, but he's got maintained cognition and he's showing resistance to the mutations that he's inherited. Okay, here, wait. Come back, come back. When we thought about, we had till 50, that's a pretty good life. I mean, you can, you can have a good life to 50, but it sure is nice to get those extra gravy years, as we call them. We're heading east of the Cascades uh, to Manson, Washington, to our son and daughter-in-law's house. Being lucky as I am uh, to having avoided, uh, avoided uh, Alzheimer's so for, for so long, it's, I, I don't take it for granted. It's a, a great excuse to go over there. Our family has spent so many years of nobody talking about, about it, and we're taking the opposite approach. 
time together is what's most important in making those memories and enjoying each other while you can. We thank you for family. We thank you for all that we have. Okay. I've woken up with nightmares of starting to be symptomatic and waking up in tears because it wasn't just a bad dream. I sat up in bed and was like pushing myself to think of everybody's name I, that I could picture. I was pushing myself to say, what did you do yesterday? How long did you do it? Where was it at? To try to talk myself out of feeling like I was there and going symptomatic, it terrified me. By being part of the research, most of them know, especially people like Brian, those who, uh, or others who are at a stage where they're, they're expecting to develop symptoms, or they may have some mild symptoms and still start the research, they know that the, them just being part of this actually may never truly affect their disease, um, but it does have potentially a profound impact on their children. This is for my daughter. It has to be for my daughter. So I, my hope is that by the time she comes around to 18 and can get her own genetic test, that there will be some answers, there will be some hope as far as treatments. I'm, I'm giving of myself so that she doesn't have to worry about it. <laughs>